In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best station designs in Transport Fever 2 and these are so, so, so OP because they allow so many trains to come through at the same time and it can even process up to three trains on the same platform. It's really, really good stuff. So in Transport Fever 2, most people are going to go to the station default and then they'll click like, I don't know, six tracks, then they'll just place it down. Not the best plan. If you want to do a terminus station, this can work. Uh, because you want to have a lot of trains kind of sitting around at, at terminal stations a lot more than your through stations where a lot of things passing through in and out very quickly. So I kind of get it for terminus, but you don't really use terminus stations in Transport Fever 2. You wouldn't really want to use a terminus in like a capital city or uh, any major city really. So you wouldn't really use terminus stations in any other circumstance, just that one. And that's why these through stations with the default is not really very good. So we're going to delete that. And now we can show you the insane station designs. Now, okay, why is this so much better than other stations? I hear you wonder. In these two stations, the wide and the compact version, we can run several types of train hierarchy through here. And I'm not going to natter on about this because it can be a bit complex and it also can be a bit boring, but we'll cover it basically. There's three types of passenger trains in Transport Fever 2. There's commuter trains, there's intercity trains, and there's cross-country trains. Or they sometimes go by other names such as bullet train or local train. But just keeping it simple, commuter, intercity, cross-country. Those will set it as a standard. So your commuter trains are going to be your sort of smaller, slower trains, but there's more of them. Cross-country trains are your fast, speedy trains that carry a lot of people, but there's not many quantity of the trains on the line. And last but not least, the intercity trains. Now these are kind of a combination between the two. They go relatively fast and they hold a decent amount of people with a decent amount of units on the route. They're also not going to be as fast as your highest speed trains. And that's why usually these trains are going to run on a combination of simply commuter and simply cross country tracks. They don't typically run on a mixed track like I've got here. The only reason it's set up where all trains go down this one route is just because it's just easier to demonstrate the concepts. But usually speaking in your game, you're going to have like a split off like this. And then on this track is going to be going like to a little town over here maybe. And that's going to be the commuter route. And this one's going to be your main uh, dedicated high speed route, including cross country trains and intercity trains. Because the intercity trains are more than welcome to use a bit of the cross country track here and there. Just not on all the time because it does slow the trains down slightly. But I think it is worth it just because it's just a lot easier to set up this way and it means that everything's very automated. So how do you actually construct these stations? It's pretty simple. First, let me show you what it looks like with a full station. Here comes a commuter train pulling into the station. It comes and stops at the end of the platform here. Okay, that's great. We've still got all of this platform space that's not being used. So not only can we fit another train in just here, we can also fit another train in just here. And there you go, that's three trains at the same time it can hold on this one platform. And I'll show you how this is done when we construct it just now. So to start, I'm going to show you how to construct a station that's going to accept terminating trains and also through trains. Probably the best station in the game, hands down. Then I'll show you this more compact version, which is through trains only, a little bit later in the video. Let's start off with the station body alone. For this, we're going to need to get a new station. We're going to go on the standard passenger through station and make it one track. We're going to need the 320 meters and you can go standard or high speed track. The high speed track gives you trains slightly more of an acceleration and a slightly more of a high top speed, but it's only going to be really useful in the middle point between two stations and not for very long. So place down your station and then we're going to click it and click the little spanner and that's going to open the menu. I like to go ahead and just delete all of these roofs and annoying things that are going to get in the way and we can always add them back in later and especially because you want to sort of customize them to fit your city because no doubt there's going to be a town placed around the station so i like to just do this and then place the buildings after it makes things a bit easier now go to the tracks menu this is kind of important what you choose if your network is a diesel or steam network standard tracks if your network is a high speed network then typically you're going to be wanting catenary which is the electric trains and that's going to be the standard tracks with catenary or high speed tracks with catenary if you're in the late game but for now i'm going to just use these standard tracks because my whole network is going to be diesel or steam and from the platform go out 12 tracks just like this then we're going to fill in the rest of the station lovely now once that's all filled in go to platforms and we're going to add a platform on the other side like this now this is a lot of through tracks here so uh, let's sort this out and now we're going to count from the edge of the platform so starting with the tracks four and then delete the fifth piece so one two three four delete same on the other side, one, two, three, four, delete. Then we're gonna go down the whole station, deleting all of these tracks on the fifth piece. This is what it should look like so far. Platforms, fill in all of this row we just deleted and all of the other row. 
Dead center, delete these four pieces of track here, then fill this in with platforms too. And now like this, on the end of the station, in the extremity, so not the center, go back two pieces of track and cut the third piece. Now here's where it really starts to get interesting and really creative. As you'll notice, in Transport Fever 2, you can only park one train on a platform at once. But with this method, it allows us to do what we did earlier, and I showed you where were those three trains on one platform. Go to Tracks, not Platforms, and then we're going to add some tracks into the station. So I'm going to use different colored tracks to easily show, but you should use the same type of tracks whatever you've used. So connect them up just like this. And now we're going to add some switches so the trains can overtake if there's a train parked in front of them, and it's going to make things really OP. If your trains drive on the right, it should look like this. And if your trains drive on the left, it's the opposite, just like this. My trains drive on the right, so I'm going to be using this design. And that's exactly how you build the station. It's pretty much as simple as that. But we have to have trains coming in and out of here. And here's where it does start to get slightly tricky. Okay, so on this station, there's two setups. There's a four track and there's a two track. It's going to depend on your setup. I personally like to root for the two track and then upgrade later to a four track because 99% of the time you will be fine with just a two track. This station can handle way more trains than you're ever going to need. So it's just easier to just do a two track. But I'll show you how you do a four track as well. Let's just let these trains get out of here. And then I'm going to pause and I'm going to get rid of this track and we'll reconstruct it from scratch. And I can show you how it all works. So we've got a two track input which carries commuter, intercity and cross country. And we've got a 10 track input on the other side. How do we make two into 10? Well, it's easy to get things lined up at least because we can drag the track straight into there and get that connected and that's nice and parallel. We're going to go with the closest track just here. That's going to plug in nice and far away, giving plenty of room so the other tracks can also come and join. Let's say this track goes into here. Then the next track is going to go into this track. It just about fits in there. And then this track is going to go into this track here. And that means the tracks are nice and smooth. If you do it any other ways, like bringing this track straight into here, it's quite a sharp curve. For that track to actually try and get into like that as you can see it's quite a lot sharper the track speed limit is 40 compared to 60 uh, and you don't really want that especially if you're using high speed trains you want to get those trains accelerating as much as possible and that's why i like to do it this way and to top off the two track setup you're going to go for your tracks and just make a little x that's going to go into this terminus here so if a train pulls in onto the terminus say on the right it means that if a train on this track coming down here sees the train on the right it can also pull into the left on an alternate platform if you need to now let's build a four track exit. This is going to be your incredibly high demand, big route service. Just a note here, I typically only use a two track or a three track. I've never felt the need for a four track because it's just so much overkill. You're just wasting money on maintenance of tracks you're not even using half the time. So same as, I'm going to delete all of this and I'll show you how it works. Okay, same as before, but this time we've got four tracks going into ten tracks instead of two tracks into ten tracks. Now to start off with, it's the same thing. Grab a track and bring it into the terminus. Just like that, lovely stuff. Then I'm going to bring these tracks all the way down to here, like that. It doesn't make a lot of sense because they're just crashing into the platform, but it will make sense once we finish with them. Now we can do the same method as we just did here by bringing this track really far out, or you can bring out the middle tracks, it's up to you. For this, because it's a lot more beefy and heavy duty tracks, I'm going to have to bring the middle ones out, I think, just because I want to show you the other example and the other way of doing things. So I'm going to bring the middle tracks out to probably about the same sort of distance, but don't go crazy just make sure you've got enough room then this track's going to go into there like that this track's going to do the same on the other side now the next thing is going to have to be connecting these tracks in which is a lot harder than you think if you want you can delete these extra bits of track here because kind of all we need is up to the points and then you can take your tracks and you can start to plug them in so our tracks on this side are going to connect in over here keeping it nice and smooth motion just like that and the same can be said with this track we're going to connect it up to here same spot with a nice and smooth motion. Make sure it's the same spot because we're now going to add an X in over this track and that's going to go from there and same on the other side just like that. There's now an X so the trains can cross over. Say in your setup you have a cross country train here but I don't know for whatever reason you've got some other train on this track that needs to get onto the other side of the track because currently we're on the high speed track, the center. Uh, you want to get onto the slower track then you can now cross over with this track here. Another way of doing this is also to add a slip switch by pressing that and pressing yes. But that means that your trains have incredibly reduced speed. That properly kills your acceleration on the trains. It means they can only leave the yard about 10 mile an hour. You get rid of that. This has a much, much faster way of getting out the yard. So I would leave that in because it might look a bit ugly. It's worth it for the acceleration. Let's do the same on the other side. Lovely stuff looking just like that. Now you can either keep these tracks here as a sort of siding where you can store your locomotives if you want to make like a pretty scene. 
but I'm going to get rid of them. I left them in here because it allows you to create nice smooth motions with your tracks, it means everything's nice and parallel, and that's how I like things to be in my safe. But there you go, that's now set up. The last thing of course, as before, is to add an X into the exit of the terminus, so the trains can pull in and choose a platform. And that should top up the second method of doing a outbound track from the station into the other tracks. Okay, so let's take a look at our line here. We've got at the end here just a random terminus. It's nothing special, it's just your default and the exact same on the other side. In the middle is our station. Let's see what the routes are doing by clicking on the station and we can see that we've got C, CC and IC, AKA commuter, cross country and intercity. Let's open up the bonnet here and let's see what's happening. So our commuter trains, they're gonna be coming down this two track here and they're gonna be pulling into the station they're going to either go right to the end of the station and stop here, leaving the two platforms behind free. If there's something in platform 1 slash platform 2, then they'll park at the end of the station. Same can be said on both sides. It doesn't matter if you have the commuter service on this side or in the middle on this side. As long as they're doing this method where they're stopping along one of three of the same platform. So the intercity trains. They're doing the exact same thing. They're going to be pulling to the same platforms and sharing with the commuter trains. Now the cross country is a train that does get its own section of track just because we don't want it to be blocked at all. And also this train does not do alternate platforms. It's always going to stay on the one platform here and other trains can move. This train has to be a full length platform as it's a long vehicle. We've also got these little terminus platforms here. Now these tracks are suitable for your commuter trains and some exceptions some intercity trains too. So I'm now going to go and delete all of these routes and I'm going to show you how you construct them. So let's start with a fresh three routes. There's nothing on any of these. Let's go with a commuter at a station and we'll start, let's say down here. I'm going to go and bypass the station straight up and go to the next station. And then this is going to go back and forwards. Obviously, I'm going to make all of these alternate platforms and do this for all three routes. And now all three routes are done. We can actually now start on applying these trains and the routes into the station we've built. Starting off with the commuter service, so in sequence in this map, this one's number one, we want this one to be number two, and we want this one to be number three, then back to number here, this is number four, and then this is going to be number one again, starting from the beginning. So this means, because we've got one over here and two over here, we're going to have to add one in the middle. To do this, simply select one, and then it'll highlight it, then add a station, and then you can click on the station you want, and it's going to insert it between the two. So now it's one, two, three. And then after this one, so click this one, this is going to be number four, so it's two and four, and then back to number one. Now under two and four, we're going to set this up. So on the two side, we're going to press on the platform, and it will now pop up all the numbers on the station. At this point in the route, we're going southbound, so we want the train to be on the right side of the track, and that's going to stop at the end of the platform. So number 16 is probably my preference here, and this is how we set it up originally. If you can't see the bottom of the platform list, by the way, you can also press this button here, which opens the full menu. Set the platform default to the number that's on the end of the platform. Like I have here on this one, it's on this side at the end of the platform, platform 16. Because it's a commuter train, they typically aren't very long, one or two cars. So we're gonna add multiple alternate platforms. As you can see here, 15 and 14 are the ones to choose because this means it's all gonna be on one platform. And then we're gonna go back to manage line on the way back, now going the other way, we're going to want to do the exact same thing, but facing the other way. So this is going to be finishing at number one with an alternate platform of two and three. Lovely stuff. We're going to come back to this as well. So now go to your intercity, copy the exact same thing we just did on commuter. That's done. It's exactly the same as commuter as you can see. The one difference we need to be aware of here, intercity trains are longer trains. They need more space. So in our alternate platforms, we're going to untick the furthest away one. So one is our primary, three is the furthest away, untick. And here we have the one here, which is 16. Uh, so 16 is our primary, 14 is our furthest away. So untick that one as well. We need the extra space for the trains. Obviously, it's going to come back to bite us as trains are going to be trying to enter the station that are too long. They can't fit. We're going to get an error in the top of the screen and that's going to block up the tracks, cause a lot of traffic. The cost country train, finally, it's pretty much already sound. We've just got to go in and do the same sort of thing. So number one, add the number two station. After number three, add the number four station. And then this is going to be set to 13 on this side. And then going back, it's going to be number four with no alternate platforms in this station because it's cross country. Looking at here, you might notice that for a lot of the station, there's just bare tracks. 
Like, these tracks are only being used two on this side, one on this side, it leaves an extra track. There's a reason for this, it's because if you have a cargo train, and you've got several trains that are in the station for the passengers, the cargo train's not going to wait here, it can just keep going straight through and overtake, and it doesn't lose any speed, and that's a big issue for cargo trains, because they take a long time to get up to speed because they're so heavy. You don't want them slowing down or stopping, really. If you can afford it, you just want them to slow slightly down, but not go too low speed or not stop. Stopping is the worst, because that means you completely lose all your momentum. If you keep going, even at a lower speed, you just bypass this and then you go full speed again down this line. They're already gone by the time these trains are leaving. And because these are accelerating anyway, they're starting from nothing. They're at low speed and they're not going to overtake. They're not going to be able to catch up to the train in front that's already gone with the cargo. However, while these junctions may look very cool, they're not going to be very functional without any signals. And that's why we're going to add some in just now. Let me show you something. Here we have two sheds, two tracks and one station. Inside of here, there is two trains waiting. We're going to have a race, ladies and gentlemen. Who is going to get to this finish line first? On track number one, the signal is just before the switch that gets into the station. On track number two, the signal is a little bit further back. Let's find out. We're going to press play and both of these trains are going to go at exactly the same time. I have not altered the tracks perfect. They're both equal. Same amount of length, same amount of height and elevation, just different signals. All going to this one station. Let's press play and find out who's going to win this race. And out they come out of the shed. We're going to cross this signal now. Who's going to stop and who's going to go? And the one with the signal closer will stop. The one with the signal further away will go. We can use this logic and apply it to our own stations to give high speed trains priority and give the low speed trains a wait so the bigger trains can go. Stations have automated signals built in, so you don't need this, but I'm going to add it because A, aesthetics, and B, the computer sometimes forgets what it's doing and it will get lost, so it's nice to have a backup. So I add your signals on both sides on the exits of the platforms. Now, using the theory that I explained earlier with train acceleration and deceleration based on signal placement, where do you think these signals are going to go? That's right, the cross-country train signals are going to go a little bit further forward. So you can either place them just like this, just a tiny bit further forward, or you can do a little edit to the station itself, bearing in mind that you have to use the cross-country on the inside of the track, which not only for this reason, but it makes more sense because you can get the cross-country train passengers to get off, cross the platform, onto your local service, instead of having to get off here, go under the underpass, cross over here, or get on a local service over here. You can really do it either way, but it's definitely better this way, because it allows you to do this, which I'm going to show you now. You can delete the signals and just have a track that goes and connects directly into this track over here, just like that. Then you can stick a signal right there before the junction. That means your high-speed cross-countries can pull straight out of the station. They've got plenty of space to accelerate, and this is also giving plenty of chance for these guys to stop at the end of the platform while these guys are accelerating and don't have to stop at these signals. So I'm going to leave both methods in. On this side, we're going to have it like this with the track. On the other side, we're going to just change it so it's like the other method, which is just sticking the signals just near the points, a little bit more further away than the other points like that. Upon entry to the station, on the commuter side, we're going to put a signal just there. And then way, 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 way back here, we're going to put a signal in the cross-country place, which is just there. And that means that any time between this signal and this signal all the way down here, if there's a train in this block and there happens to be a high-speed train coming past here on the other track, then this train is always going to get priority. However, if a train comes down this track, enters the block between these two signals and doesn't have a high-speed train come by it, that means that it's going to get access to the station. No worries, it'll still be green, the signal. And that's pretty much it. Do that on both sides. What's essential is that you have signals way, way, way down the line that are covering both sides of the track just like this. This is quite fine having all parallel signals, two facing one way and two facing the other way. And that's fine. Just have them at regular intervals just like here. And that's going to cause your trains to not have too much traffic. What you're probably going to see on these tracks is that these trains are going to just choose like sort of random tracks. And that's why you're going to have to add the signals as waypoints. Let's clear the signals off here and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the intercity train. As you can see, it's completely on the wrong track. I want it to use the cross-country tracks. So in between our station and the next station over here, so click number two, add a station, then we're going to stick a signal waypoint in just there. That's now going to use this track that we want it to use. And again, on the way back from here to here, we're going to add a signal. We can use the exact same one next to it, stick it in there. It's now going to use the correct tracks. Same can be said for commuter, it's using the high speed track there, cross country, don't want that. So instead we can stick in our signal there, like that, on this signal here, and it's now going to force it to use this outside lane. And that's how you change the main station, but you still need to set the trains up to run through the station. 
and it's a little bit more complex and it kind of depends on your save but I'm going to give you a sort of a rough guide of what you should be putting on here. So on our commuter train route I've got four trains and the reason for such a low amount of trains is because when you first build this your cities are going to be pretty tiny. You need to build this near the start of the game probably around the 1900s but eventually these cities are going to grow it's going to require more trains to run through these stations and that's why it's future proofed and built so you can expand 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 add more and more trains and it will never really have an issue. You could really go with as many trains as you want. You could add three times as much as these trains and it should be fine. When you first build this though, probably four is a decent number. On the intercity, I've got two trains and on the cross country, I've got the one train. Typically speaking, you're going to have a low amount of cross country trains, one to four. Then you're going to have double the amount you've got on cross country for intercity and then double your intercity for your commuter. In fact, you can even sometimes, depending on what your passengers like, do they like commuter more, do they like in city more, do they like cross country more, depending on what your commuters are actually choosing to ride, you can choose specifically different types of routes to increase the amount of trains on, because for some reason, some passengers might want to be taking the high speed trains more than the commuter trains. It's just the way the game works, they like to pick and choose, so you can use the data in your game on what people are choosing to increase trains on specific routes. Now we'll also have a look at the compact version of this station, which doesn't include your terminus platforms, it's just a through station, but it still has a reasonable capacity. It will have half of this station's capacity, minus also the, the terminus platforms, and it's also going to struggle a little bit more with through services, because the through tracks are going to be used more than the other station is going to be used. So this is probably not best for your capital city, but it still will work very well. Let's build it. Buildings. One track default station, 320 meters. Place it down. Go to configure. I'm going to delete the roofs and all the random stuff we don't need for now. Nice one. We're going to make this four tracks wide. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to fill this whole length of the platform in just like before. Then add a platform down on the edge. Then again, count two from the edge. And we're going to cut this piece here just like that. Same on this side, two, and then cut the third piece. And now we're going to add our tracks once more, but this time it's slightly different. So we're going to build across connecting all these again. However, this time, both tracks are going to cross over in a leftwards direction like this. Now, exiting the station is so, so much easier with this style of station compared to the other station we just did. It simply connects your two track mainline. I'll show you four track in a second like that. And then with a crossover, just like that, just in case. And that's literally it. You're never going to use a crossover. It's good to have. That's how you connect it with a two track. On the other side, let's use a four track. So you just plug it into the station like that. Then you're going to add a crossover that goes like that. Crossover that goes like that. And that's it. You're done. <laughs> Apart from signals, obviously. But yeah, it's, a, it's much simpler to connect the tracks on this stellar station than the other station. It's a similar sort of setup, a similar sort of concept. If we have a look at this station, it's clearly using just the right side and then just the left side of the very extremities of the station and smash them together in the middle to create this. So this is the intercity colour. This is doing exactly the same thing coming to the end and it's also adding a turn off for so it can use the back end and the front end of the station. Commuter exactly the same but in pink this time. Now commuter trains is a similar sort of story but because on this side of the track we're already on the extremities we can literally just pull straight into the station. No issues. I'm not even going to try and overtake here because if we're overtaking we're using our crucial only two tracks that we've got for our high speed stuff that's going to come through here. So it's not really worth it. It's more worth making the commuter train wait on the outside extremities and then just pull straight off into this point here. And our cross country service is going to do a similar sort of thing. Unfortunately, because we don't have our center platforms anymore, it does have to share with the commuter service. That's the biggest downside with this station. It has to share with the commuter service. But you know what? It gets the job done for the most part, especially if you're only using a few trains on here. It's a smaller sort of city. It does the job. So that's going to come on here. And like the commuter train, it's going to just go straight out like that. But instead, onto the center tracks instead of the outside tracks. And our intercity train is going to be exactly the same as we had on the big station. It's going to come in. It's going to stop at the end or it's going to stop on the second platform and then it's going to come out if it's on the second platform and rejoin the center. It just gives it that extra option so the commuter train can stop there and it means that the intercity can still pull in behind and it'll still function. Signals and it's pretty much the same thing. The commuter trains on the outside are going to have the signal very close to the station so the high speed trains have priority. Their signal is going to be way 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 back here. This is the closest signal to the station on the high speed cross country and intercity. And then on the exit, because the trains are literally splitting tracks as soon as, it means 
that you don't really need signals, you only need them further down the line like here. Because the train's going to pull out here, let's say it's across country, it's going to just straight away switch to its own track. No issues really, and the same for the commuter, it's just going to go straight down there on its own track and it shouldn't be too big of a deal. And that pretty much wraps up the best way of making stations hands down in Transport Fever 2. But how the hell is this network going to cope with all these trains running along these tracks? And that's why you need to watch this video which explains how you actually manage your tracks between the stations and get them the most efficient they can be to hold the most amount of trains. Check it out.